This workshop is uh, going to show you how to study more effectively from textbooks. How many of you have courses that use textbooks? Okay, clip courses now, they don't use textbooks, but they use textual information. You know, they download it off the internet. This still applies to that. But um, it shows you how to read and study from textbooks. And uh, it's also going to enable you to rapidly improve test scores in courses that use textbooks. Now, I know you guys already do well, but what we're going to try to do is see if we can boost it up a notch or boost it up a level. But also, along with that is going to come, we're going to, we're going to help build up your confidence. And um, we're going to try to show you how to study effectively for tests and relieve the stress that's associated with test taking. Because from teaching in a high school environment for 30 years and having so many students, I learned firsthand that nothing is more stressful to young people than taking high stakes tests. And you know how many, guys, you know how many high stakes tests you guys are going to take during four years of high school? About 300. About 300 high stakes tests. You see, that's why I'm telling you how important this is. We've got to teach students today to how to effectively study and prepare themselves for tests so that they can get high marks on tests. Because if you can do that, the better grades are going to come automatically. And the GPA is going to go up. You see? But you've got to concern yourself with studying for tests. How do you do it effectively? You know, when you take a look at it, for four years in high school, you're probably going to take between 40 and 48 midterm and final exams. You're going to be spend 15 days testing for MCAST. For Two years out of the four years, right? 15 days of MCAS testing. You're going to be testing, you're going to be taking SAT and PSAT tests two to four days during that four years. So you got what, 40, 48, and you got uh, 15 days for MCAS, and you got two to four days for SAT, PSAT. Then in your core courses, I remember when I was teaching here, I had to give four exams a term in order to give you a grade or the equivalent, so four times four is 16 per core class. If you've got five classes, that's 80 tests a year in your core classes times four. That's 300 tests right there. So um, we got testing gone wild here in Massachusetts, and that's not my word. Those are the words of the former Secretary of Education, Dr. Matthew Malone, who I know personally. He used to be the superintendent in, Brook, uh, in, uh, in Brockton. And he went over and said, we got testing gone wild in this state. But that's what we have to live with, and that's what we have to prepare ourselves for. Okay, so anyways, what else is this uh, uh, workshop going to do for you? It's going to show you how to get the, the better grades and a higher GPA. That's the goal. Um, it's going to help you make smooth transitions into post-secondary activities, whether it's college, career, or military. Okay? Well, this is very, very important. Okay, I don't want to scare you, but, the, but the, the sad truth of the fact is that only 5% of the students that go to community colleges graduate in two years. 17% graduate in three years. And the bulk of the students that drop out, 47% of the kids that drop out, drop out due to academic failure. Once they get into college, they don't know how to handle all this work. They're getting homework for four or five different courses. They're passing up, you know, they're piling it all on. They said, high school did not prepare me to do college level work. We're going to show you how to do that in here. And I'm going to give you testimonials from students like yourselves that I had years ago that are in college and talking about the effectiveness of the skills that I've shown them. Also, uh, I'm going to show you how to do left brain, right brain memory techniques so you can store important information in your long-term memory and recall the test time. That's key. And uh, again, we want you to reduce the stress associated with high stakes test taking. I'm going to show you how to do that. But it also comes down to time management. You have to know how to manage your time. And you see, you should know how to do that because time, unlike any other resource, is totally predictable. You're going to get the same amount of time every single day every, throughout the year for the rest of your life. You can count on that. You know you're going to get 24 hours a day. Right? Every hour has 60 minutes and every minute has 60 seconds. It's totally predictable. So you should be able to manage that and handle it. It's not like money or supplies or people down the road. You don't know how much of that you're going to get or when you're going to get it. But time is totally manageable. 
because it's so predictable. And to be effective, to study effectively for tests and continuously do well on your tests, you've got to have time management skills. Okay, and I'll show you why as we get into this. And also, we want you to achieve and exceed your full academic potential while you're in school. That's the goal here, to show you how to do it, you know, the way other people have done it. Now, uh, how, many of you, how many of you students in here like history? How many of you like history? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's all right. You know, I know you like history because I used to always survey my students at the beginning of the year, and I found out, and I was kind of surprised, really, but more than 50% of my students, even though I had them in science, more than 50% of my students admitted their favorite subject was history. So I know that you folks, I, I expected at least half of you to like history. Now the reason why I asked you that question is because today's agenda, I'm going to give you, we're going to go from 8 to 10. I'm going to go from 8 to 10, I'll give you a little break in between, but I'm going to go from 8 to 10 and then I'm going to have you apply the techniques that I show you to a sample piece of text in one of your own textbooks or in textbooks that I brought. I want you to apply what I showed you. All nice and easy. We have Mr. Chinapi is going to help you. Miss White, is it Miss White? Miss mm -hmm. White is your uh, is a mentor in the program, as you know. Uh, she's here to help, and of course I'm here to help as well. But the first part of the training I want to do, and the slides I want to get into, I want to give you a brief history of SQ3R study skills in the United States. I think you folks will find it interesting. It's not the Bob Goss method. I've added to it and I've enhanced it over the years, but the original study skills method, which is called the father of all how-to study programs, was developed in 1942. And I want to give you some background on that. And then I'm going to have you folks perform a self-needs evaluation. I want you to identify, take a simple little survey, easy to use, quick and accurate, and it's going to identify for you whether or not you have a need for study skills. And we're going to show you the value of that as well. That will take about a few minutes. And then I'm going to introduce to you SQ4R study skills, which is my method. Because what I've done is SQ3R was developed in 1942 at Ohio State University. And it was very, very powerful. What I've done in teaching SQ3R over the last 12 years is I've added computer note-taking skills and left brain, right brain memory techniques to it because those technologies did not exist in 1942. They didn't have laptops in 1942, but today all my students have laptops. So, and I found out early on that they didn't know how to take notes with laptops. So I have a section in here on proper note-taking skills using computers. And I highly recommend students to use computers as part of the studying process because of all the attributing that you have available to you on computers that you don't have available to you by hand. And also, I've added left brain, right brain memory techniques to SQ3R. That technology did not exist until 1970. They started doing that technology down at Caltech, 1970. So I've added both of those, uh, both of those skills and techniques to SQ3R, and I call my version of SQ3R, SQ4R, which is 21st century study skills. We actually brought SQ3R up to the 21st century due to the technology available to us today. Okay, you understand that? So I don't want to confuse, I want to clarify that right now. And then also now, then I'm going to give you a detailed review of the six steps of SQ3R. Uh, for, uh, I'm going to show you how to do SQ4R. Uh. By the way, i got handouts for you and everything. And i got everything for you you can use as a template going forward. Plus, I'm going to be available to you uh, through email. I'm going to uh, uh, come on uh, Wednesday afternoons uh, as much as you need me to reassure, answer any questions you have. I'm going to give you full support on this, but I'll tell you, my experience over the years has been, folks, you really don't need that much support. Maybe once or twice and then you're off on your own. You will be empowered to study effectively from any kind of a textbook and achieve good test grades in that, in that area. Okay? Because what I'm showing you today, you can use in any course that uses a textbook. 
I used to teach it in science, but my, once I taught it in science, my students used to use it in history and so on and so forth. All right, so let's move along. Then I'm going to give you a real model of how to use SQ4R step by step. And then we'll take a break and have some more donuts. And then I'm going to, we're going to come back and I'm going to have you pick a little piece of a textbook that you brought, anywhere from five to ten pages. If you didn't bring a textbook, I have some extra ones that I brought. I'm going to have you pick a piece of text and we're going to have you apply SQ for our study skills to that piece of text. And I'm going to come around and watch and you know, advise and support. And then uh, we'll get back in here, we'll wrap it up, any questions you have, any comments, then we have some nice uh, certificate of completions for you.